Now we'll move on to leaf spots and fruit rots. Um, Phyllosticta is really the only one that um, we've had a problem in terms of leaf spots. Uh, Phyllosticta is, um, this one is specific. These two species of Phyllosticta are pretty specific to blueberry. We don't see it that often. Um, I'm not going to go into details, but Pycnidia are the fruiting structures of the pathogen, and you'll see them inside the uh, lesions of leaves or fruit. They do produce mummies. The fruit will get dry and hard. So again, sanitation program, get those out before those Pycnidia release their spores. Um, symptoms usually occurring in mid-May, mid but you're treating those right after harvest. Um, conventional fungicides are really effective for any of the leaf spots in general. I don't really know personally of any uh, organically certified, but there's one that's been reported in Georgia as pretty good called organocide. I don't know if anybody has used that one. So that's in the literature. I have no experience with it. We rarely see leaf spots on blueberry affecting yields. Okay, usually it's just pretty much, um, it's pretty much reduced to the leaf. Um, really, they don't get on fruit that much. Which is, which is a good thing. So unless it's really um, affecting photosynthesis, we can just kind of live with it. We can increase air circulation, hope next year is not as wet, and usually that uh, the amount of leaf spot diseases will, will be reduced. In terms, of, uh, in terms of fruit rot diseases, pretty common one is anthracnose ripe rot. This is the same pathogen that causes um, one of the stra strawberry anthracnose and also causing uh, bitter rot of apple. So it's pretty, it's pretty widespread. We also see it causing a lot of different rots in, um, in wild fruit and berries. Uh, there, our common varieties are pretty susceptible, but a clean field is really gonna keep it down. So it's not one that I would worry about a whole lot unless you have an air circulation issue. So just improve air circulation here. It, uh, infection usually occurs closer to flowering and on young fruit, and then um, symptom development is gonna occur as fruit ripen. Same thing, it does the same thing with apple. So if it's really severe early in the stages, it'll cause like a shoot blight or a, a blossom blight. Um, otherwise, it'll just kinda cause a raisining of fruit. And if it's really rainy at the time of ripening, you'll see the oozing of those spores, um, that, um, that mucilage there. And uh, if you see this, by the way, my research project on Apple really relates to this one. So if you see this one, usually it's later in the season, let me know. I'd love for you to send some to me or get it to your agent for me. <clears throat> the pathogen overwinters in those blighted twigs. Um, and, uh, or on the mummies that are still hanging, those mummies that fall to the ground. Um, and we see a lot more sporulation during wet years, so you may have had more of it this year, or you may see it next year as a result of infections that, were, uh, that occurred this year. Usually you can just prune it out. There are resistant cultivars out there. Um, this would not be one that I would target per se unless you had a consistent problem with it in your field. Uh, if you do, fungi either rotate out, get some uh, more resistant cultivars, or start using fungicides right at the time of bloom. But uh, frequent harvest and clean picking is probably the best thing you can do for this.